All right, guys, so in this video, we're going to be talking about Mimblewimble, which is a really weird name, and it's actually named after the Harry Potter tongue tying curse in the Harry Potter series. So, what exactly is Mimblewimble, and what does it have to do with Harry Potter? Well, let's get into it. All right, so here's the deal with, with Mimblewimble, and it's uh, a little tricky to say if you say it uh, three times fast. I'm sure I'm going to screw it up. But here's the thing about Mimblewimble. Mimblewimble is an adjustment to the blockchain that allows for better privacy. Now, one of the most important things about cryptocurrency, one of the reasons why people like it is that when people first see cryptocurrency, they see it as something that's totally private because it just goes from one address to another address. And, you know, it's just a series of numbers and there's no intermediary parties, that sort of thing. But it actually leaves a trace. That's why there's a couple coins like Zcash and Monero that are known as kind of the privacy coins. Why they actually have a use case. So the interesting thing is that the Mimblewimble takes his name from the Harry Potter tongue tying curse. And what it does is it brings more anonymity, it brings more privacy, and it also brings more scalability. And this is important because it looks like Litecoin is gonna be implementing this very, very soon. And that's why this is important right now. So basically what it allows for is completely private transactions through the security framework that's, it's actually different than Bitcoin. So interestingly, um, it was developed by anonymous users, much like Natosha Sakamoto. The guy went by the name Tom Elvis Judser, which is a French kind of derivative of Voldemort, of course, which is also from Harry Potter. And so this is the actual like white paper that was released about Mimblewimble uh, back in July, 2016. Uh, a few months later, it was improved upon and cleaned up by Andrew Palestra. Um, and this is in back in August 2nd. And he said, while the paper was detailed enough to communicate his main idea, it contained no arguments for security and even one mistake. And so what this does is this goes into exactly how it works. So if you're into reading the white paper, what I'm going to do is I'm going to link these below in the um, in the description of this video. But I think it's important because it's being picked up by Litecoin. Now Litecoin traditionally has been the number three cryptocurrency. It's kind of always been looked at as the silver to Bitcoin, Bitcoin's gold. And a lot of people see it as a very reliable store of value. However, if we go and look at the charts the cryptocurrency let's go to cryptocurrency rankings it's really fallen down from the days when it was consistently number three um, you see that uh, the cardano polka dot ripple uniswap um, and you know there's some here that are right around it um, even dogecoin is in the top 20 now so why has litecoin fallen so far i think that's that's kind of an important point to think about. Although I do think with the implementation of Mimblewimble, that's gonna be a very attractive sign for investors. And one of the reasons is, is because Litecoin is one of those coins that like, like let's say people were just getting started in, in cryptocurrency now. You know, they probably wouldn't be interested in Litecoin just based on the top 10. Whereas people that have been involved in crypto and people that have a history in crypto, have a lot of trust for, for Litecoin and for how it's run. The question is, why do people need, why does Litecoin need Mimblewimble? And basically, um, it does two things for it. It creates better fungibility and better scalability. So fungibility, um, and this is an important point, but it, it's kind of difficult to for people to get, I think. So basically, the value of one Litecoin should be exactly the same as another Litecoin, so they're always interchangeable. And if you split one into two parts, the value before and after the split should be exactly the same. And you need that fungibility in order to have any form of money to be a convenient payment tool. And the problem is, because of the dark market, some people believe that neither Bitcoin or Litecoin is essentially 
completely fungible. And this has always kind of been a shadow on the back of cryptocurrency. And I think it's one of the reasons it doesn't have wider adoption, although I think this is definitely going to, uh, to go away. On the other hand, if you can get that fungibility and at the same time have that security, that's gonna make Litecoin extremely attractive to a lot of people for a lot of different reasons. And it's gonna increase the use case of why someone would use Litecoin. Now Litecoin already is faster than Bitcoin. Adding this would create a layer of protection that would be very attractive to a lot of users and it would increase the speed of how it works because of the, uh, the proof, proof of work protocol. So it's important to have fungibility. Um, there are a couple other privacy solutions. Uh, there is Monero uh, and I mean, all of these have their issues. Uh, one of the issues is Monero's technology makes it difficult for Monero to be scalable um, and Zcash is vulnerable to bugs. Um, so that's one of the issues with that. Now, the way that they're gonna bring this into Litecoin is likely with a soft fork. So there's gonna be a separated add-on, which will be kept as small as possible. And so the majority of the code will be the same and could be upgraded with Bitcoin. But this makes it much more of something that people could use for transactions. Proof of work, it's a different implementation of the proof of work blockchain that basically increases privacy and scalability. And those are the important things about it. It's in being implemented through a feature called a cut through, which reduces the block data and removes redundant transaction information. And so basically what it does is all the information is there, but it's presented in a different way. So Mimblewimble blockchain keeps the essential information while also providing more privacy and the validators can make sure that no unusual activity happens, i.e. double spending, which would be problem with fundamentally the blockchain and uh, with fungibility. So yeah, the other key difference is that the, the, the data size of the blockchains is smaller. And again, you know, that's one of the hindrances of Bitcoin. Bitcoin, people are looking at it as a store of value, not as a day-to-day -day payment system because it takes so long to get that blockchain verified. So there are some advantages with it. Um, blockchain size is better. The scalability is better. The privacy is better. I should point out that there are some limitations with this. The confidential transactions tend to reduce transaction throughput significantly due to a larger data size. So while it has more privacy, it has lower uh, transactions per second. Also, it's not quantum resistant. It is reliant on digital signatures. So it is vulnerable to potentially uh, quantum attacks in the future. Um, so that's an important thing to, uh, to keep in mind as well. However, it is pretty notable as a development in blockchain. And I think that with Litecoin getting ready for this, it's gonna be very exciting. The Mimblewimble protocol was initially proposed back in November, 2019. And uh, David Burkett, the developer in charge of the integration has provided an update. And he says that the big progress has been made and the initial code will be complete and ready for review on March 15th, that's four days from now. So I think this is really good for Litecoin and I would expect to see a pop in the market. I mean, Litecoin was one of the early names to establish itself on the market and has been, you know, long been reliable for cheap and, and fast uh, transactions. It's one I've always relied on myself. A lot of people uh, really like Charlie Lee and the way that, that Litecoin is run. If it has privacy while still having, you know, the base code being very similar to Bitcoin, that's going to make it very attractive to uh, to a lot of people. I would anticipate that uh, right here, Mimblewimble code might be ready by early 2021. When this, you know, gets released and, you know, people start to see that, I think that it's going to really boost the, uh, the price action on Litecoin. As I said, Litecoin has you know, seen, let's just look at the last three months um, from about 80, 
you know, all the way up uh, to just about 240. So it has seen some gains, but it hasn't seen the same kind of gains that we've seen in some of the other cryptocurrencies, um, which could be coming now with the Mimblewimble code and David Burkett, who's the, uh, the developer of it. Yeah, clean up the code. Initial code will be complete and ready for review March 15th. Um, so that definitely is interesting. So those are my thoughts on, uh, on Litecoin. Fungible really is one of the, the, the pillars of cryptocurrency. It is uh, important to make sure that it is fungible. So Mimblewimble looks like something that is exciting. You know, I definitely, I <laughs> let me put it this way. I know that people love privacy. And while those coins like, like Monero and Zcash, they're known as the privacy coins. They also have a little bit of that kind of black market feel like, oh, why are you using those coins? If you, if you, you know, weren't doing something nefarious, whereas Litecoin has a very clean feel. Um, it's very trustworthy. So if they can develop the, the Mimblewimble code and bring in more privacy and fungibility, um, that should be very exciting for Litecoin. So what do you guys think about Litecoin? Are you as excited about Mimblewimble or do you just think it's some crazy Harry Potter tongue-tying curse? Let me know in the comments. Uh, I'd be interested to hear what you think.